LG Mobile is no more, the next generation of foldables has taken its time getting here, and the brand that phone freaks used to rely on to spice things up, OnePlus, has gone mainstream with all the compromise that carries. So when I saw that a new smartphone from Realme was about to expand beyond its initial China exclusive to a wider release, a phone powered by top shelf silicon with a leather back plate, pioneering charging technology, and a price impossible to ignore, well, I decided it's time I re-examine my rule about only covering mobiles that come to the United States. Because phones like the Realme GT, well, they're not perfect, but I'm tired of missing out on them. Little disclosure for you right up front here. While the subject of this video is a Realme GT review sample sent by Realme, this video is not a full review. Like most phones not designed for North America, this one lacks several critical bands for 4G and 5G, meaning that while it works on networks like T-Mobile and AT&T, it doesn't do so very well. If those North American bands were here, the Realme GT would be the modern manifestation of what OnePlus used to call a flagship killer. Getting a Snapdragon 888 for €449 Euro is impressive enough, but pair it with a 120Hz Super AMOLED screen and you really feel every bit of that power. There's no hesitancy in the interface at all. A Realme fitted a custom cooling solution, a stainless steel and copper composite the company says can keep the phone cool enough to maintain 60 frames per second in PUBG for more than an hour. I'm not going to test that claim because I'm an old who only plays World of Warships, but Realme sent over a demo version of the cooling system that changes color when heated up, and it does indeed seem to carry heat across the entirety of the plate very rapidly. Of course, there's no substitute for real testing. Several reviews of the China model debuted in March indicate the cooling system by and large does its job. I'll link those reviews below. Now, you don't have to be a gamer to appreciate the other sweeteners, the throwback 3.5mm headphone jack and the fairly big battery, clocking in at 4500 mAh. While there's no wireless charging on board, the brick in the box is a 65 watt wired unit that can take the phone from empty to full in just 35 minutes. If that sounds familiar, well, it's probably not the first thing in this video that has. Realme's Super Dart charging is really just another brand name for the Warp Charge technology on OnePlus phones or the SuperVOOC 2.0 on Oppo. And that's because Realme is yet another sub-brand sibling of those companies, under China's BBK Electronics umbrella. And the Realme software is an extension of that. It feels to me something like a middle ground between OnePlus's Oxygen OS and Oppo's Color OS with quick launch shortcuts from the lock screen, various interface overlays, and even DC dimming for YouTubers like me who need to fight the flicker while filming the screen. And if the reporting is accurate, Realme even seems to have followed an early OnePlus example in benchmark manipulation. <laughs> LOL, stop that. In general, the added features are at best useful and at worst ignorable. You can even replace the launcher wholesale if you want, as I did with Niagara Launcher here. Another familiar feeling cropped up when I fired up the GT's camera. A Realme told me in my pre-briefing that the camera was the company's least critical consideration when designing the phone, but that the specs were still competent. And in my limited testing, I've found that to be mostly true. In general, the primary 64 megapixel Sony camera does a capable job rendering scenes in adequate lighting, and it's backed up by a wide angle camera that as usual is more fun to shoot with, but lacking in resolution at just eight megapixels. The third camera is not a telephoto, but a 2-megapixel macro, the kind of shooter my friend Miriam Joar refers to as a sticker camera, because it's usually just there so a manufacturer can slap on a triple camera label. But the real disappointment is in darkness, where night mode succeeds in amplifying the light, but only at the expense of accurate color. You'll have much more fun playing with the various neon and dynamic bokeh portrait modes than you will trying to shoot after dark. If you want killer camera performance from a BBK phone, I'd say you'd probably want to explore Oppo's options. There's just something about the shots I get out of the Find X3 Pro that I find bewitching, and that's not even counting its microscope camera. Now, as crucial as cameras are to the way I value a smartphone, of equal import is the combination of design and hand feel. And I really like what Realme has done here. 
While there are glass-backed versions available for the GT, this black and yellow trim was impossible to ignore for a guy who spent his formative phone geek years slinging Nextel phones. The camera module streaks into an eye-catching racing stripe, its glossy black surface achieving the illusion of depth via a barely perceptible pattern glimmering just beneath. And as I say, every time I come across a piece of tech with a leather casing, I wish this was way more common than it is. It's synthetic in this case, but don't make the mistake of thinking that means it's just plastic. Well, it's a finer grain than the real leather on my ThinkPad X1 Fold, and you can definitely tell the difference. Compared to the glossy glass or cheap plastic you'll find on most phones, this is much softer, more satisfying to the touch, warmer, and just more grounded. Realme tells me there's also a coating over the top to prevent it from staining over time. I guess we'll see. And finally, as someone who's finally starting to travel again, you basically can't make chargers small enough for me. And this mini flash charger is the smallest I've seen that still pumps this kind of power. <laughs> 50 watts. It does this using gallium nitride technology and some innovative capacitor design. I'll link to this review from Charger Lab if you want to learn more. It is sold separately, but the fact that this will also charge OnePlus and Oppo phones at their fast charging rates is just icing on the cake. It's been a while since I've been excited by a charger, but I am. The Realme GT is not a phone I'd carry. The cameras aren't good enough, the screen doesn't get quite bright enough, the speakers are on the tinny side, and of course it doesn't fold. But you sure do get a lot for the equivalent of about 550 US dollars. I mean, the most obvious equivalent in terms of most specs would be its sibling, the OnePlus 9, which costs almost $200 more and doesn't look nearly as nice, in my opinion. As I say, I can't recommend the GT because of the limited band support, but I'm glad to have spent some time with this eye-catching, leather-backed reminder of just how much fun we often miss out on in the US market. Here's hoping OnePlus takes some design cues from the Realme team for its next stateside release. Folks, if you'd like to weigh in on which non-North American smartphone I should cover next, please leave a comment below and subscribe to the Mr. Mobile so you don't miss it. This video made possible by a Realme GT review sample provided by Realme, but the company had no editorial input into or even an early preview of this content, nor did it provide any compensation in exchange for its production. Until next time, thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe and mask up if you haven't yet gotten that vaccination, so we can all get back to... Staying mobile, my friends.